Is it okay to get drunk? Lots of people drink alcohol. Even some Christians drink. In my culture, drinking is almost necessary for work relationships and friendships. Today's big question is, is drinking okay, even for Christians? Hello, my name is Sam Ju. This is a verse-by-verse -verse daily Bible study with a big question to go deeper into God's Word and to go wider in the world. New videos will be updated at 5 a.m. Monday through Friday. If you enjoy my videos, consider subscribing to this channel, hit the bell notification so you won't miss a thing. Also, leave your comments and questions below the description so we can have more interactive study of God's Word. Are you ready for today's study? Let's dive into Ephesians 5.18. Let's read Ephesians 5.18. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Now let's look at the word dissipation. In Greek is asotia, means what can be saved, figuratively prodigality, spiritual wastefulness due to excessive behavior and the dire consequences it brings. So basically dissipation means wasting, wastefulness. Let's go back to this verse. Do not get drunk with wine for that is dissipation or wasting. So if you get drunk with wine, you are wasting your time, your life. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is the Spirit of God. Let's look at this verse in light of other verses. Making the most of your time because the days are evil. In the verse 16. Now, making the most of your time, in other words, do not waste your life for the days are evil. Right? But if you get drunk with wine, what happened? You, that's dissipation. You will waste your life. So don't get drunk with wine. Now that is also uh, applied in leadership in the church. Titus 1.7 For the overseers must be above reproach as God's steward, not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not addicted to wine but pugnacious not fond of sordid gain. You see that if you are overseer, if you are the leaders of the church, you should not be addicted to wine. So these two verses talks about two things. First, if you get drunk with wine, you will waste your life. Second, if you get drunk with wine, you cannot serve in the church. So in your individual life, and in your communal life as a church, you cannot do anything if you get drunk with wine. So who is God? The Holy Spirit is the filler. You need to choose in between um, drinks or something the world offers or the Holy Spirit. Either you are filled with that or you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Now you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The worldly mind is drunken and spiritually wasted. But church is filled with who? The Holy Spirit. The application is, first, refuse to drink alcohol. Now, whenever you have the opportunity that people come to you and um, they bring, the, uh, bring the alcohol, you can refuse it. Second, pray to be filled with the Holy Spirit instead. And help your friends not to to get drunk because they are wasting their life. So how can we communicate this with the world? First, pray. Pray for your non-believing family members and friends. And second, when you meet with them, you can meet with them, yet refuse to drink alcohol with them. And that will open the conversation because they may ask why. Then you can tell them why you refuse drinking. And you can connect it to the gospel opportunity. You can tell them why and who God is and why we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Friends, let's pray that God would fill our hearts with His Spirit, not with drinks of the world. Father, please help us and lead us to be filled with your Holy Spirit instead of being filled with others. We thank you, praise you. In Jesus' holy name I prayed. Amen.